In the headlines, court fixes Wednesday to rule on FG suit against ASU as protesting students block Lagos Airport Road. NAPTIP rescues 19 suspected survivors of human trafficking in Kano. Court dismisses PDP for lack of jurisdiction. Away from Nigeria, clashes with Palestinian security forces in Nablus leave one dead. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thank you for joining. Now, beginning with the ASU impasse, the National Industrial Court has adjourned the interlocutory injunction ruling on the ongoing hearing of the government challenging the ongoing strike by the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, to 21st of September. Noel Sampson, who was at the court, tells us more on this. Going by the current development, prayers of millions of Nigerians concerning the ongoing industrial action by ASU will soon be answered. This was made known by the council to the federal government, where he stated the government will want the strike called off so that the students and lecturers can return back to school while court proceedings continue. As you know, when the case uh, came up on Friday, the uh, last Friday, the Honorable Court made an order um, adjourning the hearing of the application by the federal government for an interlocutory injunction seeking to restrain. Uh, the academic statement of universities from continuing with the strike uh, pending the hearing and determination of the referral made by the Honorable Minister of Labor and Employment. Um, when the matter came up this morning, we informed the court that we were ready to go on with the application, the business of the day. However, the uh, learned counsel for uh, the ASU, um, uh, I said he had filed another application for a plenary objection, which uh, was served on us right in court at about 11 a.m. And we told the court that application was not right for hearing. What was right for hearing is the application for interlocutory injunction. And we argued along those lines, and the Honorable Court agreed with us. The counsel to Asu, Femi Farana, who was also optimistic that the industrial action will come to an end, he said the readiness of President Mahubari to meet with stakeholders and the invitation of Asu by the lawmakers concerning the matter can be seen in a positive light. There are moves by the government to continue to explore an amicable resolution of this matter in the interest of the nation and in the interest of our children as well as the lecturers who are affected by the strike. Uh, the leadership of the House of Representatives has invited the ASU and other stakeholders to an urgent meeting in the National Assembly tomorrow if the government will at least consider the interests of our, the students and the national interest. And we hope that the, House of, the intervention of the House of Reps tomorrow uh, will go a long way to addressing in the issues that are still left. It is hoped that a amicable solution will be reached and the seven-month strike will be a history. No, something. Trust TV News, Abuja. In what appears to be the biggest singular cocaine seizure in the history of Nigeria's premier anti-narcotic agency, operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, have busted a major warehouse in a secluded estate in Ikorodu area of Lagos, where 1.8 tons, an equivalent of 1,855 kilograms of the illicit drug worth nearly $3 million were seized. At least four drug barons, including a Jamaican and a warehouse manager, have been arrested in the well-coordinated and intelligence-led operation that lasted two days across different locations in Lagos State. A statement by the Director, Media and Advocacy of the agency, Femi Baba Femi, listed the kingpins of the cocaine cartel in custody to include Soji Jibril, 69, from Oyo State, Emmanuel Chuku, 65, from Anambra State, Wasiu Akinade, 53, from Oyo State, Sunday Oguntelure, 
from Ondo State and Kelvin Smith, 42, a native of Kingston, Jamaica. According to Babafemi, preliminary investigation reveals that the Class A drugs were, were housed in the residential estate from where the cartel was trying to sell them to buyers in Europe, Asia and other parts of the world. A market security guard, Suleiman Mohammed, has been killed in Kaswaradari Market, a section of Jos Ultramodern Market in the early hours of Saturday in Jos North local government area of Plateau State. Trust TV's Ado Musa gathered that the late Suleiman, whose corpse was discovered on Sunday morning, was murdered in cold blood by yet to be identified culprits. The report. According to the management of the market, the security guard was killed around midnight at his workplace, adding that his corpse was found within the vicinity of the market. Chairman of the market, Jamilu Kabiru, while speaking to Trust TV, described the deceased as a brave and trusted person who worked for over 15 years, adding that his demise was a great loss to the market. An unfortunate incident happened in my market last two days. Our security man one of the most powerful and one of the most trusted security, we call him uh, one way. We, fi we find him early, early, early in the morning dead. I was called by one of my colleagues to come and see his dead body. Definitely it's a very, very sad news. The wife of the deceased, Rabi Ato Haruna, while narrating her last encounter with her husband, said the incident came as a surprise as her husband had never complained of any altercation with anyone. It was a painful death, but there is nothing I could do. I have forgiven my husband if he had done anything wrong to me. We are praying Allah to forgive him too. May the paradise be his last abode. For those that killed him, if they are ready to repent, so be it. If they are not, may Allah take them away from us. The spokesperson of the Plateau State Police Command, Alabo Alfred, while confirming the incident said seven suspects have been arrested and are being questioned, adding that investigation into the matter had begun. Race to the scene and move the body to Plateau State Specialist Hospital, where the doctor confirmed him there. The corpse have since been released to the family for burial according to Islamic rights. But as I speak to you right now, the officers and men of C Division have swung into action and seven persons have already been arrested and they are undergoing serious questioning from our police detectives at C Division. The management of the market and the deceased family are hopeful that the perpetrators of the dastardly act brought to book after investigations are concluded. Ado Musa, Trust TV News, Joss. Justice Uluwa Toin Taiwo, sitting at the Ikeja Special Offenses Court on Monday, convicted kidnapped Kingpin Chukudumeme Omwa Madike, aka Evans, and his accomplice Victor Aduba, a dismissed soldier of criminal conspiracy, kidnapping, and illegal possession of firearms. Evans is standing a joint trial with co-defendant Victor Aduba for four criminal counts of criminal conspiracy, kidnapping, and of Silvanus Ahanunu Afia in 2014 in Lagos, taking ransom and unlawful possession of firearms. In a judgment that lasted for about an hour, the court sentenced Evans to a total of 52 years, and the co-defendant got 26 years jail term. The breakdown shows that Evans got five years for criminal conspiracy, 21 years for kidnapping and ransom, another 21 years for illegal possession of firearms, and another five years, adding up to 52 years. On this, on his part, Victor Aduba got five years for conspiracy and 21 years for kidnapping and ransom, adding up to 26 years. Nigeria Immigration Service has a short family of late Umukusulum Buhari killed by her Chinese lover that justice will ultimately prevail. Kano State Controller of the service, Mustafa Ahmed, gave the assurance 
when he paid a condolence visit with to uh, condolence visits to the family. Ahmed said that his men arrested the Chinese gang Kwarong as the scene of the crime and handed him over to the police with all exhibits that were recovered from him. Mother of the deceased, Fatima Jabril, thanked the controller for the condolence visit, saying that the family is still in shock over the incident. Survivors of human trafficking have been rescued by the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, Kano Office. Zonal Commander of the Agency, Abdullahi Babale, said this in Kano on Tuesday. Babale told News Agency of Nigeria that the survivors were those rescued in the state between September 13 and 18 by the Joint Border Task Force, adding that the suspected trafficker was also arrested during the joint operation. He disclosed that the survivors were recruited from Abia, Kaduna, Lagos, Eboi, Edo, Imo, Ondo, Oyo, Ogun, Inugu, and Kogi State. According to Babali, the suspected trafficker is an indigenous of Kano and was taking the victims to Libya for commercial sex and labor exploitation while the survivors were between the ages of 18 to 32 years. The zonal commander also disclosed that 18 of the survivors were females while one was a male. A federal high court in Abuja on Monday dismissed a suit filed by the People's Democratic Party PDP challenging the legality of the substitution of placeholders by the All Progressives Congress, APC and Labour Party with substantive presidential running mates. Trust TV's Shafiu Suleiman reports that the PDP had asked the court to disqualify the presidential candidate of the two parties on that ground. The People's Democratic Party had approached the court to determine whether the respondents APC and Labour Party and their respective presidential candidates contravene provisions of the Electoral Act by substituting their initial placeholders. While APC had Ibrahim Mashari as placeholder, Doyung Okupe served as Labour Party placeholder before his replacement with Yusuf Datti and Kashim Shatima replaced Masari in the APC. But in their submissions before Justice Donatus Okorongo, defense counsels raised the issues of jurisdiction of the court to entertain the suit on the grounds that it is a pre-election matter which the plaintiff lacks locals to institute. There is, a, there is an evidence of the voluntary withdrawal of the candidates. So the courts decided to, uh, to align with our argument that the decision uh, to withdraw is to be the right thing to order. The court decided that the plaintiff lacks the local standard to institute this action. And of course, the court did go into the merits of the case. The court held that it lacks permission to contest this matter. In his judgment, Justice Donatus Okorongo held that the court lacks jurisdiction to grant the reliefs sought by the applicants, as he upheld the respondent's argument that the plaintiff actually lacked the locus to institute the case. The trial judge then dismissed the case for want of jurisdiction and a lack of local standi on the part of the People's Democratic Party to institute the case. Shapiro Suleiman, Trust TV News, Abuja. A federal high court sitting in Abuja has ordered the Independent National Electoral Commission to allow the Labour Party to submit the name of its candidate, Clarita Oga, for the 2023 Cross River House of Representatives election. Justice Donatus Okoro, in a judgment, held that the Electoral Act 2022 is superior to INEC guidelines on elections. Justice Okoro stated further that Section 31 of the Electoral Act 2022 allows parties to still submit names of candidates that emerge from substitution primaries not later than 90 days before the election. He said that the electoral umpire by its own manuals cannot limit the time provided for by the Electoral Act. Olga emerged as the LP candidate for the 2023 Yala Oga Ogoga federal constituency poll in Cross River. Commuter, commuters plying Yola Mubi Highway, the gateway to the northern state of Adamawa State, have called for urgent intervention to ease movement of goods and services. 
The call followed a flood caused by torrential rains in the early hours of Monday. The early morning rainfall flooded, uh, rainfall flooded a large portion of the Yola Mubi Highway, cutting off the capital Yola from the northern part of Adama State. Commuters traveling from Yola to major northern Adama towns such as Song, Gombi, Hong, Mubi, Maiha, Michika, and Madagali, as well as those traveling from those places to Gire and Yola had to stop on both sides of the flooded portion near Jabi Lamba, a rural community in Gire local government area where the flood water over where the flood water over the road was deepest. Travelers appealed to the government at all levels, especially the federal government, because it is a federal road, fix the road and save users from the stress associated with the bad nature of the road. Of our schools, both primary and secondary schools. So, we are out to water to ensure that the strict compliance and the resumption of the students. We will plan our nomadic primary school. It's all flooded. We have to stop our children to come in for their safety, for our safety, and for the safety of the students. So, this school cannot be done today. For this morning, I'm expected to be there by 8 o'clock in the office. But unfortunately, due to the floods, I'm not able to go. And I try to get my people there. You're watching the news update on Trust Television coming up shortly. We'll take a look at longing for return of real transportation. Details of this and more after the break. Welcome back. You're watching the news update on Trust Television. Here's a reminder of our top stories. Court fixes Wednesday, <coughs> beg your pardon, to rule on FG's suit against ASU as protesting students block Lagos Airport Road. NAPTIP rescues 19 suspected survivors of human trafficking in Kano. Let's now join our correspondent, Shafiu Suleiman, who is currently at the National Assembly, where lawmakers are resuming plenary after a long recess. And now, thank you so much for joining us, Shafiu. Thank you for having me. All right, so uh, after such a long time, uh, long recess, I may say, by the lawmakers, uh, issues before them, consideration of appointment of the acting Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Olukayode Ayola, a substantive CJN, is among uh, what the lawmakers will be uh, debating this time. Can you tell us, you know, other issues uh, the Assembly will be discussing? Right. 
Right. Uh, just like uh, the Senate President and the leader of the National Assembly has said, you know, a couple of days ago while in, uh, inspecting the renovation works, uh, he did talk about, you know, beyond the uh, confirmation, if you like, of the Chief Justice, uh, the acting Chief Justice, he also talked about the fact that the National Assembly uh, will also be uh, expecting, if you like, uh, to receive the 20... Uh, 20 uh, the next year's budget, so to speak, uh, the estimate uh, would have to reach the National Assembly, you know, in line with the, the resolve, you know, to maintain the 12-month calendar. Uh, so it's one of the issues uh, that, I mean, one of the things that uh, the National Assembly will be engaging with uh, as it returns uh, from the two-month recess. Uh, again, they will also be revisiting the issue of security, even though they, uh, in a way, uh, I also encourage with the current progress being made by the executive or the security agencies with regards to dealing with the security issues in the country. Um, uh, the Senate President had uh, actually commended the uh, security forces for that and, I mean, also encourage them to do more as uh, Nigerians expect them to, you know, um, bring to an end, if you like. Uh, the current state of insecurity in the country. Uh, he also talked about, you know, the fact that um, there are other issues that have been of concern to Nigerians, especially the issue of the economy now, the declining economy and the indices, you know, are not palatable. So the National Assembly is also worried about this, and uh, he said they're going to look at it, uh, especially the issue of, uh, you know, um, food recession, that, I mean, uh, inflation that has been on the rise. Okay. Uh, All right. So, is there any likelihood of touching on the issue of ASU? Because, of course, it's been one of the major issues in the past few weeks. We saw protests across the country yesterday, in particular. We saw protests by students who blocked the road leading to the airport, uh, Murtala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos. So, uh, what's the expectation in that regard? Yes, uh, it's one of the issues he also talked about you know, during that. Uh, interview, uh, he did talk about the fact that the National Assembly is worried, uh, you know, about this prolonged uh, ASU strike, and he said that they, they would do everything possible to intervene. I, I think the, the intervention is gradually coming, even though some would say uh, too little, too slow, uh, but then the National Assembly is already engaging the, uh, the, the two sides, you know. Uh, there was a meeting, I understand, uh, with a committee of the uh, of, of the National Assembly, uh, and of course uh, the Minister of Education uh, and uh, the, the striking as to uh, the intention was to find a way of um, you know uh, intervening to uh, bring to an end this uh, prolonged strike with a crippled tertiary education in Nigeria. All right. All right, thank you so much, Shafiu Suleiman, for joining us on the news updates and for bringing us up to speed with what's happening at the National Assembly. All right, now moving on, bridges in Apapa area of Lagos metropolis are at risk of collapse because of the weight of packed heavy-duty trucks on them. These bridges are under great stress from immobile articulated vehicles, a situation worsened by recurring gridlocks and the deplorable state of roads. The bridges in Apapa could be carrying several million kilograms of weight daily as heavy-duty trucks carrying loads are sometimes stuck on these bridges for a long time alongside other vehicles. Experts believe that it is a deep trap if nothing is done to avert the situation. A structural engineer said that the bridges are stressed and weak as a result of the cyclic loading pattern on the bridge deck therefore called for urgent action. He said that this is of great concern. There should be a capacity, to check, uh, uh, capacity check to determine their structural reliability and define a load rating for each bridge. He said that along with the problems of bridges aging and changing traffic, government authorities should come up with legal load limit and periodic inspections to identify and uh, any distress when evaluating bridge service lives.
Our federal government has been called upon to revive the railway services in Meduguri to boost economic development and affordable means of transportation within and across the northeastern part of the country. Beatrice Kuruzzi reports that the railway station in Meduguri stopped operation in 2009 due to conflicts in the northeast region. Here is his report. The Meduguri train station was operating in the 60s until it was abandoned in 2009 with only few staff reporting to duty daily. During its functional days, Abaganaram community was a beehive of economic activities and it was one of the cheapest, dependable and well-organized mode of transportation across the country. Ali Usman, recalling his youth days when he boarded the train, said insurgency was responsible for the shutdown. <laughs> I was young when I first entered a train, but I can't remember the exact year, but I traveled to Gombe State. I went to complete an agreement with a friend there, and at that time the train transport fare is affordable and you travel to anywhere, but now that it's not working, lots of people are suffering. Our plea is, if the government can fix it, we will be happy. The cattle market, popularly known as Kaswan Shanu, experienced huge patronage in the 90s, where cattle dealers traveling by rail with huge luggage, merchandise and products without fear made the city a principal trading hub. Now, away from Nigeria, a Palestinian man has been killed during ongoing clashes between Palestinian fighters and Palestinian Authority, PA, security forces in the Israeli-occupied West Bank city of Nablus. Local media identified the man as 53-year-old Firas Yaish. His death was announced at dawn on Tuesday. Witnesses, as well as local journalists, have said that Yaish was killed by PA police fire but this has not yet been confirmed. An autopsy will be conducted later on Tuesday. The spokesperson for the PS Security Services, Talal Dukwet Dwekat, said that the death of citizen Firas Yaish came as a result of an injury, the nature of which was not yet, has not yet been determined, adding that they are waiting for the medical report. And that's a wrap on Trust News Update. You can watch more via all our social media platforms and also watch us live on YouTube. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thank you for watching.